Boxing Ego here. If you like this video, make sure you hit the like button and also subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon on the top of your screen to get notified when the latest new content drops. One. What up, Fight World? It's your boy Ego, and I'm back with some more boxing. Make sure you guys like and subscribe. I'm sitting in New York in my hotel room. Didn't do it several reasons, but I figured I'd do six things. I've done one for Danny Jacobs. Check that on the channel. But this video is six things that Gennady Golovkin needs to do to beat Danny Jacobs, right? And with boxing ego weapons I've done in the past, I basically play like I'm that fighter's trainer and I give the insight and the reasons and the things that I think each fighter needs to do in order to win. And it's in no particular order. Without further ado, let's get into the six things that Gennady Golovkin needs to do in order to beat Danny Jacobs. Number one, the Lemieux jab. And I call it the Lemieux jab because I think that's the best example of Golovkin using the jab. Golovkin knew he was going in there against a formidable puncher. This was not Willie Monroe Jr. with six knockouts. It's not Ashida who came from 154. It's a guy that clearly can hurt him. We just seen Lemieux in a fight where he was actually, the tide was shifting to Curtis Stevens. He did, he was very offensive and he looked very sharp and was landing some nasty stuff in round one. But as the fight wore on in rounds two and three, the beginning of it, Curtis Stevens started to come on and it looked like David Lemieux, the fight was, was shifting away from him, at least in those rounds. Out of nowhere, they traded hooks, but Lemieux landed harder and it landed first and it knocked Curtis Stevens completely out. And they're both former Golovkin opponents. And it was a brutal, shocking one-punch knockout. I mean, if you guys haven't seen it, it's clearly one of the knockouts of the year. That and Mikey Garcia versus Dejan's Latishan. Golovkin being a decorated amateur and having so many amateur fights, he knew that he had to soften up David Lemieux. You know what I mean? It's just like if you're a chef or you're cooking, how they have that little with the wax paper and you put it over the meat and you tenderize tough meat, stuff like that. He knew he had to systematically break down David Lemieux, discourage him, and probably lessen some of that power with, with good shots. And he did that. He established everything was set up to me in that fight with the jab. He just jabbed to perfection and he kept him, he used his height and he kept the shorter man at bay and he kept the, the shorter man in question and questioning how he should come in and plotting his attack. And before he knew it, he couldn't find a way to infiltrate so he was just getting jabbed and, and Golovkin's a strong guy he's a powerful guy I've seen him do these these forearm exercises and stuff like that so Golovkin's jab is actually like a power punch you know what I mean he has a very stiff jab and he has strength and power behind it so I call it the Lemieux jab and that's exactly what he needs to do to the taller fighter Danny Jacobs he needs to jab 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 and make him reminisce on the Dimitri Piro fight and make him kind of hesitant to come in and um the jab just does so much it's an underused punch as i said in the other video with danny jacobs it's an underused punch and it's a very effective punch and it's probably the most effective for setting up combinations because a lot of times golovkin is smarter than people give him credit in terms of offense a lot of times what what these power guys do is they don't set the stuff up they know they have power and they're so eager to get that power off and and impose their strength on the the opponent that yeah they get so gung-ho where they don't set nothing up but at the elite level when you're fighting good competition people are looking especially if you have a reputation for knocking out people people are always looking for the shots and they always say this in boxing the shots that hurt you the most are the shots that you do not see coming so if someone's kind of off guard or like on guard i guess is the better way to say it. if someone's on guard and looking for the the money shot you're known for left hook and they're looking for it constantly then they're almost paranoid about it so they're going to be more more hesitant to get caught with that however when you do a jab that changes everything because they don't know what's coming after the jab you know what i'm saying and it disrupts so much that it sets up properly sets up you to release combinations if you don't jab if you just start coming with the combination combinations 
it's just like a straight line. What's the fastest way to get from point A to B? A straight line. That's kind of what a jab is. It's a straight punch. Just bow. It's right there. And again, when you're Golovkin, when you're Jacobs, when you're a powerful guy, a jab can hurt. So it'll make someone think twice. You can bust your nose. It can make your nose bleed. It could, uh, you know, what I mean, even rattle your brain. Just depend on how you get. Hit. I've seen people get knocked out with a jab. I mean, it's rare, but I've seen it happen. I've seen people definitely get knocked down. As I mentioned in the Jacobs video, Charlo got knocked, or Charlo knocked down J Rock with a jab. So a stiff jab is a power puncher his best friend so this fight kind of comes down to when you got two guys with power one's taller one shorter i think the jab is going to be the most important punch for either guy whoever gets that jab off because that's going to set up their power and it's like somebody has to play boxer and someone has to play brawler and and overall i just think the jab the lemieux jab like i said that's the best example of it so i'm gonna call golovkin's jab the lemieux jab and i think he needs to get that off on the taller fighter discourage him break him down make him feel the power early but it also keeps you more safe than automatically going into and going in for a hook you know what i mean because those are wider punches take longer to get to the target jab 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 number two push an uncomfortable pace and cut off the ring now this is what golovkin does this is what he does well but again with boxing egos weapons i'm just outlining what i think would be the most effective approach or game plan for both fighters and Golovkin has shown in the past that he's very good at cutting up the ring especially if you try to box him I think where he, he struggles or has more problems if you try to have that inside dog fight and don't give a, a fuck about his power right you're just in pocket and confident in your defense that's going to catch him off guard more than being at the range he wants you to fight at you know what I mean so to me, Golovkin needs to do what he always does, which is cut off the ring and push an uncomfortable pace. We're talking about one undefeated fighter and a once beaten fighter. And the once beaten fighter lost that one fight by stoppage. So you need to be the reminder of that by making it uncomfortable and like, hey, this guy's really aggressive and he's just coming in and but he has to be smart while he's doing it. You don't want to just come in, which leads me to my number three point don't rush him Golovkin it like to me he hasn't I don't think he's fought anyone as rated as as a Danny Jacobs just cancer survivor tall with power taller than him you know what I mean uh, amateur pedigree he had those different attributes but they were spread out like Gabe Rosado or Ishida were taller than Golovkin but they both came from 154 so he could probably, Golovkin looks like he has a solid chin, so he could probably take a 154 pounder who had their first fight at 160, he could probably take their their punching power better than a Danny Jacobs, you know what I mean? Because Golovkin had the flu in the, the Rosado fight and he did get hit some. So, you know what I mean? If that was, if that was the Jacobs fight, could he take some of the, the punches Gabe Rosado got off from a, a full-fledged middleweight with knockout power? You know what I mean? So, I think Golovkin... Since he's dealing with a big middleweight, you know what I mean? And his team even says this. I'm not reinventing the wheel here. They say this is the, the, the biggest test for them and this is the best opponent. And the winner of this fight deserves all the credit. But to me, Golovkin can't rush his work and he can't rush in because that would be that would be bad going in with the taller man, especially if Jacobs does the six things that I said in my video. Um, Golovkin just doesn't want to rush in. That one's pretty self-explanatory why a fighter wouldn't want to rush in it's just because both guys have power and you you might rush into something and that's just what it is number four use amateur experience now i'm sure if you've had the amount of fights that gennady golovkin has had you felt taller punchers and you, you fought everybody you know what i mean you don't just fight that many fights without fighting various styles so Reflect on the times where you had to fight like a Lucian Boutte and you knocked him out Think about what you did in those fights and think about how you dealt with that You also fought Andre Durrell have a win over him I think Durrell has a win over Golovkin and the amateurs So just kind of revert back to your experience and revert back to those amateur fights where you you may have had a puzzle similar to a guy like Daniel Jacobs <clears throat> number five 
Number five, this one's really important. If you get him hurt, finish him. As Mortal Kombat would say, finish him. You will die. No, that's from the Mortal Kombat movie. That's very imperative. The reason I say that is because unless you're like maybe like a Floyd Mayweather whose who's defense is, is up there, up there, you don't want to keep punchers around because they always have what they call a puncher's chance. You know what I mean? So it would be foolish for Golovkin. And again, this whole list, some of these things that I'm saying, these fighters already do well. Golovkin is a good finisher. If he knows he has you hurt, it's usually, it's usually a wrap after that. Like Dominic Wade, I covered that fight. And he hurt him, knocked him down, I think, in the first round. He closed up shop and closed the show in the second round. So Golovkin does that well, but it's imperative that you do it well versus Danny Jacobs. If you get him hurt, you have to be smart and find a way to get him out of there. Because, again, or force a referee stoppage, again, you don't want guys like Danny Jacobs with that type of power lingering around because you always become a threat and sometimes you guys not to sound corny or cliche but that wounded animal that type of opponent can be the most deadly because they're hurt they're you know i mean their adrenaline is up and it's it's do or die for them so you got to get punchers out of there you don't want to just you hurt them in the second round i mean i've seen it go multiple ways keith thurman a puncher he, he hurt Leonard Bundu, who's not necessarily a big puncher, but he hurt him, and he didn't close the show and get aggressive. I think he probably could have forced the stoppage if he had jumped on Thurman or Bundu, but he didn't, and as a result, the fight became like stagnant. It wasn't one of Thurman's best performances. His face was kind of tattered up at the end of the fight, and people were like, hey, this is the guy who was calling out Floyd Mayweather, but... In addition to that, when you're dealing with a puncher, we've seen Mickey Bay versus John Molina Jr. John Molina Jr. is losing 11 rounds. And then he knocks out Mickey Bay, lures him in in the 12th round, right? We've seen Mike Jones and Randall Bailey. Randall Bailey got cracks. Losing a fight and then he just out of nowhere, bop! And is you know what I mean? The end is near. So... Andy Lee, he's he's an upset. He's on the undercard, upset specialist. You leave him in there too long, you could be losing to John Jackson all rounds and knock him out in the last round. He was getting outboxed by Korobov, knocks him out. You know what I'm saying? You got to get these punchers up out of there because the longer they stay, the more dangerous they are. Because you know what I mean? It's, like I said, it's, it's sink or swim. It's do or die, and they know that. You know what I mean? I'm behind all scorecards, so they have the option to go broke and they're wounded animals. You look at. Juan Manuel Marquez versus Manny Pacquiao, that whole saga. The fourth fight, Marquez was bloody. He was looking battered in the fifth and sixth round. And he, it looked like Pacquiao was going to get him out of there for the first time in the whole saga of fights. And out of nowhere, in the last 10 seconds, Pacquiao gets knocked out. Dangerous opponent, you know what I mean? Backed into a corner. He had no other options but to get some respect. And he timed a perfect right. And the rest is history. Pacquiao was asleep. So, to me... Golovkin's been a good finisher, but for this fight, he has to make sure he's a good finisher. If you get your man hurt, ice him because you don't want it to linger on. Because what happens is sometimes I've seen fighters lose from fatigue. Like the person they lost to in the later rounds might not have been the more strategic fighter, might not have been the more skilled fighter or experienced fighter. But when you're dealing with punching power and, and your energy levels are depleted and you get drugged into the later round, sometimes it's just a battle of who wants it more and, and who has the better conditioning, you know what I mean? Because fighters, your body's naturally fatiguing. So again, dealing with the puncher, you gotta get them out of there. That's just how I see it. And finally, number six, make him work for it. No free shots, don't rely on your chin. Very self-explanatory. Um, Amongst Golovkin fans, like diehard radicals, there's this there's stigma that Golovkin allows certain fighters, Kell Brook or Willie Monroe Jr. or whoever it is, when he feels they can't hurt him, he allows them to get off free swings. Now, I was at the Danny Jacobs Media Day in my neck of the woods, Bay Area, California, and he said it himself. He says, I would love for him to give me free shots, period. It just that would be the that'd be foolish. You I forgot the that Nate Campbell fight where 
went in the fight and just giving someone free shots. That's stupid. So I don't think Golovkin was necessarily giving free shots. I think that's kind of like part of his urban legend myth that the fans have. have he wants to entertain. Yeah, he, he's just a showman. So he wants to entertain the crowd. Nah, I think Golovkin is smarter than that. He knows this is his whole livelihood. He just got a, a deal with Hugh Blot. He's Team Jordan. You know what I mean? He might get a commercial deal, a movie deal for something if he keeps winning. It's all on the line. His family eating. So I don't think he's in a, in a rush to lose. So just keep that in mind. I think Golovkin has to make him work. Everything Golov that Jacobs gets, it needs to be because he just worked for it. Don't give him nothing. Like, no free shots. And don't rely on your chin. That's the thing about it. Golovkin, to me, it looks like he has a good chin. But there's only so much blunt force trauma anybody can take. You know what I mean? People aren't, like, I've seen the toughest of chins crack. Antonio Margarito versus Shane Mosley. I've seen Roberto Duran get knocked out viciously. I've seen Julio Cesar Chavez get knocked out by Costa Zoo, right? Even guys who some people say are, are pillow fist or whatever, like Floyd Mayweather knocked out Ricky Hatton. Ricky Hatton was unbeaten. He seemed tough. He seemed like a tough guy. You know what I mean? You can still get broken up and get broken down and get knocked up out of there. So I think Golovkin needs to stay away from like just kind of machismo or relying on his chin like think oh i'm gonna put so much pressure like if you're putting on so much pressure and jacob's just like bow and just is cracking you with some stuff you need to re-strategize to me you don't want to just try to walk through his shots or or try to show him no respect like he, he kind of did that with kill brook and i think golovkin's work got a bit sloppy because he was desperately trying to end things and he's like i i really felt that he felt the Kell Brook, a welterweight, was having some success. So he was just like, oh, hell no, nah, hell no. Nah. I'm not letting this welterweight tee off on me, even if it's not hurting me. I think it might have hurt him, but he, he claims it didn't hurt him. But either way, it's still a welterweight who just moved up doing it to you. So it's not necessarily a great look. That's why a lot of people said Golovkin was exposed afterwards. So that being said, Golovkin kind of rushed his work and got kind of sloppy and less methodical than he normally is trying to get Kel out of there and impose his size you don't want to do stuff like that with a Danny Jacobs especially if if he's getting off solid shots because I don't think he has the type of power where you can easily walk through and just be all right and, and not be level-headed the Lovkin claims he has never been hurt I don't know I'm not him I'm not part of his camp or his, his body but I have a hard time believing that and to me that could be a bad thing because even if it is true let's say it's 100 percent true what do you do if you do get hurt and you've never been hurt nobody's ever been able to bring this side out of you and then somebody finally does it's like how do you respond we it just goes to the what i said in the jacobs six things he needs to do in the box of ego weapons i said take a knee if you're hurt so will golovkin know what to do if no one's ever been able to hurt him and somehow magically danny jacobs lands some shot that hurts you what will golovkin do you know what i'm saying so to me it's just easier for Golovkin to not get any free shots, use your aggression, but use it smart, and just don't rely on your chin. Don't rely on um, the chin. I can walk through your shots and just get more aggressive. That I don't think that's a good look against a guy like Danny Jacobs. So those are the six things that I think that Gennady Golovkin can do to beat Daniel Jacobs. You guys let me know how you think I did if you have anything you want to add. Also check out the six things, the boxing ego weapon for Danny Jacobs. I went over six things that he can do to beat Gennady Golovkin. Again, will they do this? Who knows? This is my thoughts on what they can do or what they would need to do in order to win. Boxing ego, ego playing trainer. Make sure you guys rate, like, subscribe to the channel, all that good stuff. As always, hate, comment, and subscribe. Till next video is Ego signing off. So if you enjoyed this video and want more content like this on the channel, you can show your appreciation by going to the PayPal donate button or the YouTube support button. And you can donate any amount that you feel is equivalent to the value of this video. Much more to come. Thank you guys for your support. Boxing Ego, the future of boxing.